throughout was mild-mannered, polite, on the face of it, cooperative. He appeared embarrassed to be there, upset, slightly confused. Uh, he wasn't angry, he wasn't threatening, uh, he wasn't the sort of sex predator monster that you imagine. He uh, answered every question. He was in the witness box a long time. He was there, I think, a day with his own counsel asking him questions, and I was cross-examining him for two and a half days. Warboys was about to torment his victims one more time. In the cases where forensic evidence proved sexual contact had occurred, he claimed the sex was consensual. I think that was really quite an appalling thing to say. Not only had he attacked them, he then made them relive that in the court process. Despite pleading his innocence, Warboys was swamped by the sheer weight of evidence against him. Even the best actors need a good script, and John Warboys ultimately had nothing to work with. He had no explanation for why so many women told such a similar story so convincingly. They were solicitors, journalists, uh, PAs, educated, smart, professional women, and they told very convincingly a very similar story about their experience with John Warboys. The account in itself was extraordinary, that a taxi driver should say he'd won you know, many thousands of pounds, hold up a plastic bag showing them the money, give them a drink of champagne, allow them to smoke, get in the back of the van with them, offer them a, a tablet on some occasions. I mean, it was an extraordinary story, that. And for so many victims to recount the same evidence was surely compelling evidence for a jury. We were clearly in a strong position in that there was so much evidence, so much forensic evidence and so much good witness evidence uh, from these women. Um, that made his account entirely unbelievable um, and he was convicted eight weeks later. I want to thank all 14 women that gave evidence in the Crown Court over the past eight weeks. Their bravery and their integrity is beyond any doubt. John Warboys was found guilty of 19 counts of drugging and sexually assaulting women. He was given a potentially unlimited sentence, but a parole board can decide in eight years if he's fit to be released into society. He's committed offences over a whole number of years. A whole range of people's lives have been seriously affected as a result of his appalling behaviour. And the fact that he was sentenced to an indefinite period in prison is right. And it will be require a strong assessment um, in a number of years' time when that comes up for review. Warboys is behind bars, but the case has rocked London's police force to its very foundations. The Independent Police Complaints Commission severely criticised the Met for its handling of the attack on the Greenwich student, and major changes had to take place. One of the issues the Met themselves identified was a lack of systemic ability to, to gather the intelligence and link offences, especially when committed across a number of different boroughs. Wholesale changes include the centralised gathering of evidence from across London by a specialist rape intelligence unit. We've reviewed all of the intelligent processes, particularly in relation to sexual offending across London, which has given us an opportunity to make some changes, which I am confident are much better than they used to be. Scotland Yard has completely overhauled the way its officers investigate rape now. They've brought in more experienced detectives, better computers to join the dots quicker, better intelligence gathering, and you can be absolutely certain that they will not never again dismiss an allegation just because it's been made against a person in a position of trust. A total of 102 women have now come forward with allegations against the black cab rapist. But disturbingly, many still don't and may never know exactly what happened to them in the back of John Warboy's cab. The difficulty is that there are a whole number of women who I do not know whether they were raped or not. That's the reality of it. And the only person who will know that is Mr Warboy's. One of my hopes is that at some stage in the future, Mr Warboy's may consider the plight of some of the, the women who he attacked and may consider uh, speaking to me or to my colleagues and telling us exactly what went on in those cabs. Former detective and child protection expert Mark Williams Thomas investigates the impact of cyberbullying on children and adults and asks how the law could be toughened up to protect victims. That's the Tonight programme on Thursday evening at 7.30.
Coming next, time to practice your Italian as Griffrey Jones is off to Rome for greatest cities of the world. <laughs>